You also trade as kind of a necessary evil for, for car dealers, isn't it? They, they just, they can't avoid being on it. There's many, many dealers who absolutely love them and they think they do a fantastic job for them. But on the other side, there's also dealers who, with the same passion, hate them, really. I feel the brand is so ingrained into the consciousness of the British public, not just the car buying public, but everybody. When it comes to buying or selling cars, for years, most people's journey has started in the same place, Auto Trader. Whether that was leafing through a magazine or scrolling through adverts on a smartphone app, the brand has been synonymous with buying and selling cars for four decades. But its journey has not been without its hiccups. Auto Trader faces a constant battle of pleasing both its car dealer customers and car buying consumers. Two forces whose interests don't always align. But just how did Auto Trader get so big? How did it grow from a publication picked from magazine shelves to a tech titan that last year made £25 million worth of profit every single month? In this video, we chat to car dealers, consumer champions and motoring experts, as well as the people leading the business to look at how Autotrader grew into the advertising giant it is today. These days, Autotrader describes itself as a tech firm. Bosses like to compare the business to Zoopla or Rightmove, similar marketplaces in the property world that don't own or make anything, but instead simply connect buyers with sellers. The art of good business is about being a good middleman, and Autotrader has nailed that. Today, the brand is built around a huge website that attracts a staggering 10.8 million visitors every month. Each week, it displays 3.7 billion pictures of cars to consumers and has on average more than 400,000 models advertised for sale at any one time. Autotrader says its visitors spend 8.8 .8 million hours every month on its platforms and 14,000 car dealers across the country currently use them. I think probably their secret sauce is the way they integrate so seamlessly both into the way the dealers operate and into how customers use their product. It really is a super simple process. And of course, from the dealer perspective, the more you use it, I think the more you get sucked into the benefits of it. You know, they don't just provide a platform to sell cars on, they provide a huge amount of supplementary services. I think also Trade is an incredible brand. You know, they, they do have one of these positions, you know, it's like ask, ask somebody to talk about electric cars, they'll talk about Teslas. Ask somebody to talk about uh, about vans and talk about transit. Ask people where they can buy a, a used car from, and chances are they'll, they'll go and have a look on Auto Trader. Before the huge digital transition fired up its success, Auto Trader was a successful magazine publishing company. Started in 1977, entrepreneur John Majewski launched Thames Valley Trader after bringing the idea back from the States. That idea eventually morphed into Autotrader. In its heyday, nearly half a million magazines rolled off presses every week, and they were split up into 13 editions that spanned the length and breadth of Britain. Autotrader had 70 offices around the UK, and it even owned two regional presses that not only printed its magazines, but those of other publishers too. I remember Autotrader back in the days where you'd go and buy it from your local news agents or petrol station, um, you'd browse through it, in my case, as a, a youngster who probably wasn't even in the market for a car at that point, and uh, took lots of pleasure of flicking through, looking at all the classifieds. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. I used to go clubbing with friends, and after we'd been clubbing at four in the morning, we'd get to a petrol station, someone would drive, and then we'd pick up the car magazine. Sometimes, you'd, I mean, it sounds pathetic, but you could to after pie, and I'd be sat there reading, I don't know if it was Auto Exchange or, or just looking at, Car listings. Yeah, you know, it was part of a ritual uh, that the industry, you know, perhaps probably won't forget for a, a generation or two. It was it was a great way to uh, indulge your your passions if you enjoyed cars. Um, my family, my dad and my brother, are huge car enthusiasts, so I definitely have memories of 
being at home when I was young and the auto trade and magazine being omnipresent in our in our household and cars being circled and cars being viewed more for interest than anything else. And we still see huge loyalty from those consumers with the brand today. You know, at one level, the site is, you know, it's fun, it's an experience. Owning a car, enjoying a car is a brilliant experience for many consumers. And we can still bring that to life through the products and the brilliant cars that our retailer partners sell. So how has Autotrader changed over the years? Well, these days it likes to think of itself as more Google cool than stuffy mag publisher. In its offices in Manchester and London, the firm has winched classic cars through the windows of its four floor offices to be used as meeting rooms. There are free drinks for staff, soft seating breakout areas for collaborating colleagues, while software engineers can doodle on the walls as they come up with new ideas. It's all a far cry from those old school publishing days. The rep used to come round and get your pictures and your descriptions and a bit of paper. Uh, the magazine got published and you're literally waiting for the phone to ring when people saw the adverts. I can remember both buying and selling through uh, through Auto Trader magazine. You used to have somebody come round your house, didn't they? When, when you didn't have a, a suitable camera, they came round with a camera and took pictures for you and, and helped you fill in the, uh, the advert. And, and then when you wanted to buy, you, you went and got your, your local auto trader. And it was very local back then, which was, was marvellous. The news agents weren't allowed to uh, dish out a, the latest copy of the auto trader until um, half past eight on a Thursday morning. And there'd be a queue of people there, usually car dealers, um, who would be uh, at the news agents to pay their quid or 50p or whatever it was at the time. And then what they could do, they could troll through it and, 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 and buy cars. I used to do it all the time. Uh, I think we all used to just sort of rush to buy the magazine and be the first ones to flick through the pages to try to find the bargains. So I think it was, uh, it was very cheap to advertise in them days. And I think it was a great read or flick to the magazine to find the cars, really. It, it's been a staple of the industry um, ever since. You know, a great idea that was brought over from the states um, uh, that's then that's then grown and grown. And I think they've they've done a brilliant job of pivoting to um, being an online business from the sort of regional magazines that we all grew up with. In June 2013, the final print edition rolled off the presses, and the firm went a hundred percent digital. Autotrader is now a web-based giant with millions of users logging on to its tech-laden platforms every day. The car search function is so popular that at its busiest times it serves more than 5,000 requests every single second. I would say that we're a technology business, we're a data business and first and foremost we do cars in the UK and we are the place where you know 75% of all minutes are spent. All minutes spent looking at cars on sites like ours are, are spent on auto traders. So by far and away, it's the place where people um, very often start their journey and actually increasingly finish their journeys as well. When companies try to make digital transformations, they don't always work out. But for Auto Trader, it has been a monumental success. User numbers have grown every year since it ditched the magazine and dealers have sold more cars and Autotrader has made more and more money as a result. Yeah, I think uh, Autotrader probably embraced digital far quicker than, than many others uh, and they've done a, a great job on digital, on digital platform. They've uh, set the standard for, for searching for, for a used car. You see, to me, Autotrader have done a remarkable job of becoming a tech business. They are a true tech business. They are, from a used car perspective, the tech business. And in truth, I know that the, um, the disruptors have tried to create a brand by throwing an awful lot of money, be that sponsorship, be that television, radio, etc., at trying to create the brand. But the only true used car brand in this country I believe, is Auto Trader because that's the first place where people go. The transition from print to digital wasn't a quick one. The website was launched in 1996 by a small team of engineers. 
two years before Google was even conceived. But it was a full 11 years later before digital revenue matched print for the first time. And it took a further six before time was called on the physical print edition for good. In the early days, it was simply just the listings, the classified listings from the magazine. Um, once a week, each of the regional centres would send their mags and we'd publish them online. So there was a search experience, but it was um, a fairly static data set that changed once a week with the magazine. Um, and as time went on, we allowed products to update stock throughout the, the week and eventually throughout the day. And of course, that's the benefit of, a, of an online living website over a, um, a magazine. I mean, I've spoken to a number of um, retailers that have said to me, you know, the internet's the worst thing that's happened to the world. And um, I think we've got to get kind of get over that and that it is what it is and we are where we're at. I think the thing that was really difficult is all of a sudden they had to do more of the work. If you think back to those days of the magazine, people will speak fondly about their copy collectors and the people used to take the photographs and come in and have a cup of tea and talk about what's going on. Now, I'd like to think that we still do quite a bit of that, but the shift to digital meant all of that was now able to be done by retailers, which of course is better because they have control. They don't have to wait a week. They can put cars on and off as soon as they sell them or as soon as they buy them. And I think the same is true of a lot of the changes that we're talking about at the moment. These are hard changes to make, but generally those changes are almost inevitable because they are a better way of doing things. The digital shift helped the business slash overheads and ratchet up profits. In 2021, the firm posted its best ever results, with pre-tax profit up a staggering 91% to £301 million. That's an operating margin of some 70%. It's these huge figures that have got up the nose of some car dealers, who look on enviously at their margins when they are lucky if they return 2% themselves. The, our margins are very, very high, but you've got to um, remember that we operate a very, very different business to a retailer. We have no plan to be a retailer, and actually, in the marketplace space, the sorts of business that we are, um, those margins are actually um, more normal. They are, they're, believe it or not, there are businesses with, with much higher margins than what we have. We're not benchmarked against car retailers. We've got very different business. I'm not sure we'd be very good at buying and selling cars, to be honest, but we can help other people to, to build great businesses around that proposition. What we try to do though is never ever take advantage of the position that we're, you know, the, the position that we're fortunate enough to have with consumers. So we are always thinking about doing the right thing, making sure that, you know, any price changes that we make are reasonable and respectful of what's going on for retailers and the value that we've delivered. I think fair play to Auto Trader for the profits that they make. At the end of the day, they, they've taken a huge market share in a massive marketplace. And um, yeah, I guess you could argue that, is it too much? I don't know. I think if a business is successful and delivers value to its customers, I am not, I have no problem with companies making profit. I don't, because I think if you've got a good idea and you execute well and you're a good business and your business works, that you should be allowed to make great profits. Autotrader has to navigate a fine line when it comes to keeping both its consumer audience returning and its car dealer customers paying. Even the bosses struggle to say which of the two groups are the most important. Both, it has to be both, doesn't it? It starts with the consumer because if we don't have consumer engagement, if we don't do a good job at helping consumers to find and buy their next car, then we don't have a proposition to take to our retailer customers or our proposition will be much less um, compelling than it is today. However, when I think about where our organisational effort and where the people in Auto Trader are focused, we have many more people focused on supporting enabling driving performance for our retailer customers. And ultimately, you know, we listen very closely, very carefully and act on the feedback that we get from our retailer 
partners? I think the reality is, it, it, we talk about this a lot inside the, the business. At a macro level, um, both are just as important as each other. At the end of the day, the consumers come because they trust Auto Trader, but because they want to see lots of cars. And all those cars are provided by our retailers. So it is classically a two-sided marketplace that only really works with, with both sides of that marketplace. Yeah, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure we always get it. I'm not sure we always get it right. I'm not sure we can always get it right. But what we are always doing is we are always in market listening. Ask car dealers what they think of Auto Trader, and most will tell you it's a love-hate relationship. They love the results they get, but hate the bills they have to pay to get them. But why then, if dealers don't like the fees, do they continue to use Auto Trader? Because we need them, and well, they've got a monopoly, and they can charge what they want, and it's very difficult to go anywhere else. To put it very broadly, like a Yorkshireman would put it, they've got our nuts in a vice, and they can squeeze them as tight as they want, and we can't take them out. I love it that it's got the biggest market reach and there's lots and lots of prospects and customers that might not naturally come to uh, our business, um, but I hate it that it's a bit of a monopoly as well. Um, the danger with that is there's great power in that and a bit like Spider-Man, you can only have great power if you have great responsibility too. And sometimes I'm not sure they do. There's an addiction to it uh, and I know it's a terrible term to use and not one auto trader would thank me for but there is an addiction to using auto trader among dealers they find it really hard to walk away uh, and that is just a mark again of just what a great product auto trader offers. Pushing prices up is easier when you deliver results, and it certainly helps that Auto Trader has dominated the used car advertising sector for so long. The firm says its audience is now six times bigger than that of its next largest competitor. But why have rivals never managed to topple Auto Trader? Who would you say is the competition, James? Uh, who would you say is the competition? <laughs> uh, in reality, I don't think there's a lot of competition out there. Um, car gurus came along banging all the drums. I don't think there were ever competition from my, from the word go in my opinion, and I don't think they, they even are now. Uh, I know there's other dealers who use the platform and find it some degree it does work. Uh, motors somehow just don't seem to have captured it. Uh, I don't do eBay. eBay doesn't work for me. Gumtree doesn't work for me. So it's difficult to find a direct competition in my opinion out there. But every time you see a competitor start, I just sit there and I think, I hope whoever's backing you has got deep pockets because you're going to end up spending a significant sum of money and in my heart of hearts, you're not going to, you're not going to make it. Invariably where you have scale, it's very hard for somebody to break into that. And if you look at, you know, um, you know if housing, it's right move. If it's um, uh, going away, it's Airbnb. That, that dominant player has a tendency to stay in that dominant position because the cost of entry is so difficult for new people. I put a lot of that, our success down to um, our focus and actually our consistency. So we're a UK only business and we're all about making buying and selling a car better and easier for consumers and for retailers. I mean, Auto Trader has running in its kind of veins a uh, natural competitiveness and it's not really so much that we don't, you know, we don't want competitors to succeed, it's just that we want to be better. During the pandemic, Auto Trader won a lot of brownie points with dealers for cutting their bills when they needed it most. This went a long way to improving their relationships with the motor trade and car dealers have praised them for that help. There's been a distinct foreign of tensions between dealers and while most of them I spoke to didn't like the costs, they certainly did like the leads they get as a result. I describe it as a partnership. I think we have a suite of products that means that we are the most effective sales and marketing channel for our customers. We have huge influence over the car buying journey, which means we can deliver brilliant value to those retailers. I think what you've got to do, and look, I'm not going to sit here and say that Auto Trader is cheap, um, but what I think you've got to do, you've, you've got to work with them, you've got to open up and derive value for them. And in fairness to them, they are prepared to give you information that is absolutely invaluable.
These days, AutoTrader collects huge amounts of data every single day. With 1 billion requests for advert content served up by its website and apps every week, the firm is constantly monitoring the cars people are searching for. The firm often spots trends before they happen, and as it's mushroomed in size, it's used this data to get even bigger. The role of data has become more and more important and it's actually become a core part of our strategy because we think data is the key to being a good digital retailer, whether that's the quality of the data that describes the vehicle to a consumer that's online, whether that's around how retailers price their cars and how they should be changing their pricing for their cars. Tech savvy and data savvy dealers like do particularly well because they can take what they already know about the industry and their own businesses and kind of turbocharge it with the data if you like. Data is becoming more and more important in our industry. If I think back to the old days, it was shocking really, um, but nowadays everything uh, is analysed, pricing, uh, the quality of pictures, etc, etc. We use it for pricing, we use it for, for desirability, we use it to compare against anybody else in the country. Um, so it is very, very important. It's the mainstay of our, that is our used car marketing budget, is Autotrader. Um, the issue with data in and of itself though is the used car business isn't just a science, it's also an art. And I think just relying on their data could make you make decisions that are at the detriment of your business. Um, for me, still buying a car today, particularly a BMW or a Mini, it's an emotional purchase. And you can't measure that in data. So was there one thing that helped Autotrader grow into the giant it is today? Or was it simply a case of being in the right place at the right time with the right product? The, the answer to the question is because we've always been willing to embrace disruption. We haven't looked at it when we're a magazine, we didn't fear the internet, we embraced it when we were an internet business or a desktop internet business, we saw mobile coming and we embraced it. So I think at the end of the day, we've always been willing to embrace disruption. But on top of that, I do think we're, we've always been willing, whether retailers have believed it or not, we're always willing to go further than anyone else to make sure that we support our consumers and that we support our retailers. We're not complacent. Retailers have lots of marketing channels they can use. There's lots of retailer technology providers. There's other data providers. We focus on making the best of the strengths that we have. So our, our brand, our brand awareness, which is phenomenal and we we continue to invest and build on, whether that's now through our social channels or through our YouTube channels. It, we want to make our brand as synonymous with car buying as we possibly can. Auto traders got so big, I think, due to the fact that they were one of the first to the market and they became the go-to place for consumers looking for a vehicle change. And that has just grown and grown and grown with the evolution of digital. I think they were one of the first again to um, to move into that space and they've become the market leader and no one seems to have been able to knock them off that perch. Again, it's just that they've been they've been so well established. Uh, people, you know, you think about buying a car and you, you any any savvy person will go straight to Auto Trader. It's the it's the default. It's the default tool. I think Auto Trader have always been very, very shrewd. Uh, at consistently improving their offering and, and adding more and more value into it. They've never been complacent. Uh, they've never taken their position in the market for granted. And so they've always been able to ramp up what they offer people and ramp up their charging models as a result. Some in the automotive industry might think auto traders' growth has peaked. How can it get any bigger when it already works with 95% of the UK's car dealers? Will it have to continue pushing up prices or are there other tricks up its sleeve to maintain its upwards trajectory? No, I don't think auto trade has peaked at all. I mean, I think many people have said that throughout the 15 years that I've been at auto trader and it's kind of continually proven uh, people wrong. And the reason why I don't think it's peaked is actually its core business, what we do with consumers, is as healthy as it has ever been. I think at the heart of the organisation is this sense that we are trying to drive change, but we're trying to do it responsibly. We're trying to do it in a way that 
um, brings the industry, brings our partners, brings consumers very much on the journey with us. And we're really about auto traders still being here in 10, 20, 30, 40 years time and being as successful then as it is today. There's little doubt Autotrader is one of the Motor Trade's biggest success stories. While its services are pricey, the dealers we spoke to certainly wouldn't be without it. And thanks to the detailed data Autotrader is now sharing, it's becoming even more important to their businesses. Autotrader's success has really been down to a classic cocktail of being in the right place at the right time, and it made bold decisions when others would have simply sat on their hands. Its digital transition may not have been quick, but it ultimately transformed the business into the advertising giant it is today. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you visit cardealermagazine.co.uk for daily motor trade updates.